YouTubers. Thanks for watching my channel. Uh, today's topic is a little bit overdue, but it's tannins. And probably as a winemaker, you know a little bit about tannins, but personally, I think there's maybe a lot about tannins that some people don't know. Um, so in this episode, I'm just going to kind of go over uh, basics of tannins, uh, sources of tannins, types of tannins, and some things as a winemaker that you can do to affect the final outcome of your wine by uh, manipulating these variables. Um, so if you don't know, tannins are uh, that thing in red wine that kind of gives you that, that tongue drying sensation. Um, so if you imagine like a underripe banana, it, it's kind of like that sensation when you're drinking a red wine. But um, of course they can do a lot more than that. They can protect the wine from oxidation because they act as an antioxidant. Um, they contribute to the mouthfeel of the wine, so they can give it that really silky texture. Um, a, a red wine without tannins is going to taste generally pretty watery. And um, they just can generally just add some complexity to the wine. Uh, but, but it's not so generic as to say that just adding tannin to wine will immediately make it more um, you know, bitter or more well-rounded. Um, because there are just so many sources of tannin. So the most traditional source would be the um, grape skins. Uh, there's the grape seeds. There are the grape stems, which could end up in the fermenter. Uh, there are, there's, of course, oak tannin. And then there would be any tannin from any material other than grapes that could have got into the fermenter, which could be like um, leaves and things like that. Um, so starting with the grape skins. Um, so grape skins are generally considered a good source of tannin. They're considered good tannins. And um, during the primary fermentation of a red wine, the longer you leave that wine on the skins during the for fermentation, the more tannin extraction you're going to get. Also, the warmer the temperature of the fermentation, the more tannin extraction you're going to get. And um, also, if you do a cold soak, before fermentation or you do um, any soaking after fermentation while on the skins, um, which in either of those cases you would want to be sensitive of um, sulfite levels or uh, make sure you're pumping in some sort of inert gas to protect from oxidation. Um, next source which goes hand in hand with grapes are grape seeds, which again are generally considered a pretty good, um, a positive, good source of tannin. But if you look at the grape seeds of a wine grape, um, an underripe grape will have green seeds, which is bad. Um, it makes like a super astringent um, kind of mouth puckering tartness, um, where a ripe grape will have brown seeds. So you just want to make sure that your, your grapes are relatively ripe and they have um, brown seeds. Third, which is probably, I'm kind of saying these maybe in order of value maybe. Um, so third is uh, stems. So in some cases, the winemaker will do a whole cluster of fermentation where they'll actually let the stems into the wine, um, or at least let some stems into the, to the fermenter during fermentation. And same goes for stems. You don't really want green stems. Um, because again, that's just going to be that ultra harsh, like super underripe banana thing going on. Um, but brown stems and some stems are okay. And what they say is that the stems are generally pretty harsh tannin, but and they and they take a very very long time to round out. Um, but in the long run, you'll end up with a well aging wine with a few stems here and there um, in it. Uh, next, and this one is a big one, is um, oak. Um, so uh, after primary fermentation, a lot of times the, they'll want to transfer the wine into oak barrels. Um, if you don't have oak barrels, or, which are very expensive, you can use oak chips, um, oak staves. There's a lot of oak products on the market, cubes, like spheres, all kinds of oak products. Um, and oak is another, it's a, one of the more astringent <clears throat> tannins, but it's also not, I mean, there's a lot more that oak adds beyond just tannin, like vanilla and sometimes a smoke depending on the toast level. So 
Um, I generally consider oak as a pretty positive source of tannin, which will over time round out. Um, going on with oak, um, there's different types of oak. So you've got American, French, and Hungarian. Uh, and of course, of each of those types of oak, there's different um, levels of toast, light, medium, heavy. And then even within there, there's different latitudes where the oak is um, sourced from, which again, could add some differences in uh, outcome. So oak is like a whole study upon itself that some professional winemakers are probably really, really well versed in. Um, and then of course, finally, uh, material other than grapes, MOG, that gets in the fermenter. And this is pretty much just all bad. So leaves and things like that, imagine just biting a leaf, you don't want that. So consider that something you just kind of want to avoid. So you see like all the things that you can do to affect uh, the oak in your, or to affect the, the level of tannin in your wine, the types of tannin in your wine. And um, as a winemaker, it's just up to you to figure out what kind of outcome you want. How long are you willing to wait for your wine to be good? If you're willing to wait years, you can just slam that with um, tannin. And you're gonna end up with this beautiful, great wine. But if you want a young drinking wine, you're actually gonna to wanna to lay off the tannin a little bit. But that wine then is more prone to oxidation or kind of falling flat after um, a couple of years and becoming kind of a thinner, you know, flabbier wine. Um, oh, and sorry, one more thing is, um, there's one more source of oak. And this is a source that um, home wake winemakers use. They use a lot for like maybe improving a kit wine. And this is something called wine tannin that you can get from um, your winemaking store. And wine tannin is not actually usually from grapes, it's usually from chestnuts, uh, but it can add some uh, improvement to your red wines, but it could also add some smidgen of a, of a chestnutty or like a nutty flavor, which I don't, I'm not really against. If you smell those wine tans, they actually smell pretty good, so not necessarily against that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, hopefully this is helpful for your winemaking. Um, if you haven't yet done so, uh, make sure you click the little subscribe button in the bottom of my channel. If you have any comments on my video, uh, write your comments and uh, share with anyone who you think might be interested in this, these, uh, you know, general winemaking topics. Uh, thanks for watching.